I wanted to tell my dad's story. That's how it started. But in telling my father's story, I've had to tell a community story. And they broke the world record, so it's an international story. And it's Australian history that's never been told. I suppose it's like anything, when you're young, you don't really appreciate things until, uh, you know, mother time catches up to you and then you realise, man, I was involved in that. But at the time, it was just, yeah, we can do it, we're bulletproof, let's have a go. To the Western Australian Cinderella, Prince Charming is iron ore. The Northwest is building railways which together almost equal the line from Sydney to Melbourne. The Mount Newman to Port Hedland, that was a huge project because the iron ore was one of the main materials that was wanted around the world at the time. Uh, apparently they had a lot of English men working but they couldn't stand the sun. The Torres Strait Islander men, they were in demand because they worked hard. I guess they were like an army, you know, moving together. He's a long way from his island home in Torres Strait. Five years ago, the only machine he could handle was a fishing rod. The two types of employment that Torres Strait Islanders would seek when we come to the mainland would be cane or rail. So that was our bread and butter. I've worked since my dad died when I was 13. Faster than a man can walk, the rail spools out along pre-laid sleepers. I worked in the back steel. We spike every sleeper with the dog spike and we put an anchor bolt on each sleeper to stop it from moving. And by midday, we're all walking around in our, in our undies or, or our shorts because it'd be so hot and the sweat would just be pouring off you. The track goes down at an average of one mile a day, but that's not really trying. One day, I guess, the big bosses said, come on, we can do this. They were wanting to break the world record that was the amount of rail that they laid down in a day. They wanted to smash that record. I think we laid seven kilometres in 11 hours and 40 minutes. And prior to that, the record was held in, in the United States, uh, 4.6 kilometres in 1962. So we exceeded that by quite a few kilometres. The company put on celebrity drinks for us. I was only 17 too, so uh, I wasn't allowed to drink. <laughs> I mean, these men are proud of what they've done. For me, they deserve this honour. I've always wanted to do a musical. When I was a student at the Aboriginal Centre for the Performing Arts at ACPA, one of the compulsory things that we had to do was go and see an opera. It was just a little bit frustrating for me because it was in the Italian language, of course. And I walked out of there thinking, you wait. I'm gonna do a musical with my dad's language and you're all gonna feel the same way I feel. With Straight from the Straits, it's all about, first and foremost, honouring the Torres Strait Islander men who worked those railways. To me, they're unsung heroes. We're working with Opera Queensland to bring it to the stage. When you come here, talk big time. Try not to talk English. There are three languages that are prominent in the musical that you'll hear, which is the Western Island language, the Kalalagaya, the Eastern Island language, which is Meriam Mir, and the broken English, which we call Yumpla Talk. It was very hard to find young Torres Strait Islander men. My cousin rang me up, she's one of the writers of the show, and she rang me and she said, oh, do you want to act? I was like, okay, I'll give it a go. Like, I was nervous because I haven't done anything like this before at all. Like, I do singing, dancing, but just traditionally and at home, at church. We ready for the show now. <laughs> From my childhood, Dad was working in the railway and he was also working in WA, so 
I could connect directly with my character. Through the audition process, you know, you're given the script. When I saw it, I just burst into tears. Because I remember the struggle that my mum endured trying to raise the three and four of us when Dad was away. Some of you will be familiar with Uncle Gamat, who's visited us. Watching the younger kids come through and showcase that in a way that we always do through our dancing and singing. Yeah, I'm wrapped. For me, it connects me to my ancestors. So in that respect, it's quite spiritual. You're not singing from here, you, you, you tend to th you sing from here, your heart. Little is known about the Torres Strait Islands, but yet, you know, we're part of this land and just want to make a bit of history, I suppose, for our children and our grandchildren to be proud of who they are. <laughs>